Okay, we're going to start out here in Revelation chapter 16, verse 17 through 21. It says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, uh, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the third city, or the great city, was divided in, into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Very important verse right there. Mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. You see, there's going to be major earth changes in the time of Jacob's trouble. When we come back, the filthy earth is going to be cleansed. Kind of like uh, it's going to be made white, like snow. Yeah, kind of. All right. <laughs> wanted to just kind of do this because every time it snows, it always is, is a reminder to me that what can, what looks dirty and disgusting and whatever else can just be made pure and white and clean with something as simple as snow. Just a, always a beautiful reminder about the millennial kingdom that's coming, how that our Lord Jesus Christ is going to fix things up. So really, really neat. But you see there, Revelation chapter 16 says that the mountains are going to be flattened. So you say, then there's no mountains in the millennial kingdom. Well, there's going to be a special mountain. We're going to see about that. I'm going to go through a bunch of scriptures. What is the, what will life be like in the millennium? Let's go next to Isaiah chapter 30. Back to the Old Testament. I'm not going to be long-winded today because it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit out here. So I'm going to be, I'm going to make it quick. Uh, Isaiah 30, starting at verse 18. It says, And therefore will, will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Do you ever want to see this world get judged? All the wickedness made uh, pure and white again? That's part of the reason for the millennial kingdom. God's going to judge the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. And then he will physically rule and reign and judge the earth for a thousand years. Verse 19, For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. No question where it's at. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teeth teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Then shall he give the rain of, the se of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there shall be upon every high mountain, so the mountains are still there, I believe the Lord probably restores them, uh, but probably new ones. And upon every high hill, rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold. As the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bringeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. You see, what do you see in there? Do you see lots of uh, mechanized things in computer gadgetry and whatever else? No. You see a what would be called an agrarian lifestyle. In other words, farming and doing things by hand. Talking there in... Uh, uh, where is it? Um, verse 24, which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. That's a uh, hand doing things by hand, sifting uh, wheat and things by hand. That's what's going on there. So that's what the millennial kingdom is going to be like. 
you know and now it could be that the verse there you know uh, verse 25 and there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and water, streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall interesting most people in america remember when the towers fell but uh, it could be that there's actually a reference there to when the mountains are made flat i don't know but there is definitely going to be a mountain in that millennial kingdom it's a very interesting thing turn next to isaiah 61 uh, the, the tricky part about the book of Isaiah is you'll be reading along and there'll be stuff that's historical that, that Isaiah is, is rebuking Israel for at that moment in time. But then it'll also switch into the time of Jacob's trouble. It'll switch into the millennial kingdom right in the context. So it's, it's, it's a tricky book. But uh, some really interesting things here. Isaiah, Isaiah 61. He's going pretty good. Verses 10 and 11. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Everybody's going to be praising Jesus Christ. Only one religion. Not, uh, well, you have your beliefs and your truth, and I have my truth and my beliefs, and, and we can all agree to disagree. No, no. Jesus Christ. That's it. Is it Buddha? No. Muhammad? Uh, no. The popes? Are you kidding me? Jesus. And that's it. And it's kind of funny, too, because if you're a millennial and you try to spiritualize these and say, this, see, this is being carried out today by the Christ Church, the Catholic Church. How do you spiritualize that? There's only going to be one faith. Now, Catholics would say, well, we are the one true faith. Well, yeah, but you aren't doing too good of a job uh, silencing the others, are you? Or ruling the earth. Catholicism is a satanic cult. Don't ever fall for it. Uh, Psalm 98. Psalm 98. Whoop. Had it, and the wind blew it out of my hand there. Psalm 98, verses 1 through 9. It says, The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. The Lord is great in Zion, and he is high above all the people. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish iniqu or equity. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies in the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answerest, answerest them, O Lord our God, thou wast a God that forgavest them, thou, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Now, I believe that the city of Jerusalem is going to be up on a hill in this time. I think that's probably going to be one of the few mountains or hills that's left after God's judgment is poured out. And that hill there is going to be everybody's going to come to there to worship the king. And Jesus Christ is going to physically rule from there. Not spiritually through his church, through his bride. No, no physically rule from the city of Jerusalem. It's going to be pretty neat. Isaiah chapter 55. I'll show you another interesting thing here about this time period that's coming. It is going to be just amazing. I mean, you know, salvation would be great if we just, you know, uh, when we go to be with the Lord at the rapture, if we just went into eternity and that was that and praise the Lord, you know, and all that stuff. But, uh, it's going to be even better getting to come back here to this earth and getting to actually see the Lord restored and ruling and reigning with him for the thousand years. And no worries about, oh, great, the Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses are at the door. <sighs> you know, No Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, here come some Mormon missionaries. No, no. Catholic Inquisition? Nope. Sorry. It's going to be wonderful. Isaiah 55, beginning at verse 8. 
It says here, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Remember that when you start to have doubts, when people start to say, why would God be so cruel in the Old Testament? And why this and why that? God's ways are higher than our ways. You know, you're not supposed to understand every aspect of God. If you did, he'd be on your level. Oh, but, but I have to explain. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to explain everything about the Lord. Just believe. The just shall live by faith. Verse 10, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven... <laughs> And returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall thy, my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Just stop there for just a minute. Does it say your uh, clever uh, intellectual speech or whatever? No, it's his word that doesn't return void. That's why gospel tracts that are are not based upon scripture that don't have a lot of scriptures in them there's not much good there I mean, it's okay to witness to people and stuff with your own speech but man try to put the word in there a lot of guys i see street preaching they have all these clever little slogans no hope in the pope uh uh you know rock and roll will damn your soul but man that that stuff's okay but you got to add scripture in with it too it's god's word that doesn't return void Verse 12, For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. That's how you know it hasn't happened yet. Okay? But imagine that for a minute. The hills will break forth before you into singing. Huh? How are the hills going to sing? And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I don't hear any trees clap, clapping their hands right now. Bunch of spruce trees and things around here. I don't hear many clapping their hands. What's going on there? Well, you see, it's kind of like if I could explain it this way. The earth right now is like an orchestra without a conductor. There's things in this earth that just are not going to ever work right until the Lord Jesus Christ is here physically ruling and reigning for the thousand years. And then when he comes, the earth is going to make music to the Lord. The creator will be on the earth, physically on the earth. But it's not just the land and the trees. We'll continue. If my notes don't get blown away... Ah, the challenges of preaching outdoors. Wouldn't trade it for anything. Except maybe a mortgaged, you know, $250,000 building or something. Well, that's too small, though. Got to think bigger. $2.5 million building. Call it First Baptist Church or some kind of thing like that. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Then I'd be a real preacher. <laughs> All right. Amos chapter 9 show you a couple other very interesting things here head towards the new testament if you're newly saved it's one of the minor prophets Ugh. amos chapter 9 oh it's always fun amos 9 so you're sitting there at your computer you don't have to worry about the wind blowing your bible all around amos 9 verse 11 through 15 it says here, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as the days, as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity, captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the, the Lord thy God. Oh boy. Very, very, very key scriptures here. Okay. 
number one big thing that you always have to keep in mind because you know you're going to run into these heretics and more and more as time goes by the synagogue of satan people that say they are jews and they are not we're the true jews we're the true jews okay are you in jerusalem are you fighting for the land of israel physical land over there well, no but okay then you're not a jew simple all those people over there they're white european khazar liberty blah, blah, blah whatever they're fighting for the land okay they're the Jews. They are the fulfillment of prophecy. You see, it says there, verse 15, And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. God gave them land, physical land. Uh, show me anywhere where God gave physical land to the body of Christ. If we've replaced Israel, show me where it says that uh, God gave us physical land. He didn't. These are promises for the Jews. And you say, well, that's all been fulfilled. You know, uh, stupid Anderson, Stephen Andersnake, whatever you want to call him. Um, he said that all the prophecies, prophecies of the Old Testament have been fulfilled before Jesus showed up. Oh, really? Uh, so the Jews uh, don't get put off their land anymore? You're a sick individual if you follow that guy for very long. I grant you people can get deceived by him and listen to him for a little bit, but... Uh, not for very long, if you're saved. But notice there it says in verse 14, they shall build the waste cities. Hmm, interesting. Why are the cities wasted? Time of Jacob's trouble. This earth is going to be just a wreckage. But don't worry, God can make it pure and white again. He can restore it. And it's going to be an amazing and beautiful place when the Lord's done with it. Just absolutely neat. But verse 13 is very interesting as well. That the plowman shall overtake the reaper. In other words, the abundance of crops is going to be so amazing. I mean, think about it. You know, Jesus Christ being the light down here, and it's going to be seven times brighter than it is right now. This is a nice sunny day, beautiful day. You know, predominantly blue skies, some, some clouds up there. Seven times brighter than this. Uh, what's that going to be like for the uh, plants? It's going to be amazing. I just noticed my battery is just about dead. Oh boy. I'm going to have to probably finish this sermon inside. I'm going to keep going until it shuts off on me. That's incredible. It's a full charge when I came out here. Not talking that much. All right, we are back. Back inside here. Um, sorry about that. I left with a full charge on my battery, and usually it goes over an hour, but it went 20 minutes and died. So I don't know if it's the uh, fact that I have a camera that's probably six or more years old, and the battery's about shot in it, uh, even with it being recharged, or if it was just the really cold temperatures out there, or a combination of both. Not really sure. But uh, Isaiah chapter 32 is where. We had to quit there outside. Isaiah 32, verse 15 through 20. It says here, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. And that's something. It's going to be so many crops, like we were reading about there just in the other passage, so many crops, it's going to look like a forest. Verse 17 and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. When it shall hail, coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters, that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. Again, what are we seeing? We're not seeing mechanized farm machinery, high technology, whatever, the feet of the ox and the ass. Farm animals, hand tools, agrarian society. That's what the millennial kingdom is going to be. Uh, you talk about organic food, non-GMO, heirloom crops. The Lord is going to be actually here on the earth teaching us how to grow the very best fruits, the very best vegetables and everything else. For a thousand years. Wonder why people are going to be living to be a thousand years old, you know? It's going to be like the pre flood world again. But this time the sun's going to be brighter, seven times brighter, you know? I mean, it's, it's going to be incredible. 
That's what the Lord's going to do. It's going to be basically be like the Garden of Eden for a thousand years. Very interesting. Next, go to Isaiah chapter 11. You say, okay, well, we see the plants there. What about the animals? It's one of the most amazing portions of Scripture, prophecy of the coming millennial kingdom. Isaiah chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 12. It says here, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And, him, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. You read Revelation chapter 19. This is in reference to Jesus Christ. The sword comes out of his mouth and he kills that 200 million man army of the Antichrist. Um, verse 5, And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Here's where it gets interesting. Look at verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. How about that? Farm animals and wild animals, including lions and wolves, all getting along. And a little child out there playing with them. How about that? Verse 8, And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. Those are two poisonous snakes. In other words, they aren't even going to hurt people. Verse 9, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Pretty amazing. So, there will be a mountain, but it's going to be in Jerusalem, where Jesus Christ will be ruling and reigning from the throne, the throne of David there. That's why in Matthew chapter 5 it's called Jerusalem, it is the, and it's the city of the great king. That's where Jesus is going to rule and reign from. And if you look at Matthew chapter 5 through 7, that's basically the constitution, many people say, of the millennial kingdom. We're not going to go through those verses. You can look at it yourself, the Sermon on the Mount. Very interesting information. But how does the millennial kingdom end? Go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. You know, you say, okay, well, you know, I can see right now the way things are, the catching away of the bride of Christ. That's the next big prophetic event to happen. Then you have the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week, whichever you want to call it, there where God is dealing with the nation of Israel. He's smiting them for that one last time to get them in line where they're going to accept Jesus as their Messiah. He sends Moses and Elijah down. They're going to be preaching to them. At the end of that, then we have the judgment of the nations. Then they go into the millennial kingdom. And then what? Does it go millennial kingdom and then into eternity? Uh, no, there's something that happens at the end. Revelation 20, verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go, go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. God's not even going to put up with it this time. He's not going to let the, you know, the devil gets to go out and deceive the nations and, and things like that and, you know, bring them to Jerusalem to try and overthrow the Lord. And the Lord's just like, no, just, just devours them. Verse 10, 
And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented night, day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no, no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I saw one of you commented and you said about people say that hell and lake of fire are the same. Well, then how could you have death and hell cast into the lake of fire? Hell cast into hell? No. The lake of fire is the eternal state of the lost dead. Hell is the current state of them. But it's, you know, they say, well, I don't believe God would, you know, burn people in hell forever. Well, that's partly true. He's not going to burn them in hell. He's going to burn them in the lake of fire forever. So you really need to think about that and get saved. Okay? Then what happens? After the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. It's going to be great. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Get back to that in a minute. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, I know a lot of you are getting very, very weary, and I'll include myself in that number. Uh, weary of this world, weary of the wicked people that are in this world and just... You just watch it. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And you think to yourself, how much longer, you know, how much longer are we going to have to be here? Well, uh, don't really know the answer to that question. I hope not too much longer. But my real question to you is, are you going to overcome? Because the Bible says there in verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. You see, we not only have the judgment seat of Christ go back before that we have the rapture to look forward to it's going to be a beautiful thing can you imagine not dying i've gotten close a couple times <laughs> you know it's not fun i mean accidents uh really 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 bad sickness where i didn't think i was going to make it and i don't mean just you know i have a slight cold or I'm, I'm talking very 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 bad sickness i've you know i had a my appendix burst years ago and and, uh, I mean, I was, I was literally within an hour or two of death. I mean, the doctor misdiagnosed it. Doctors are so wonderful. Hospitals are so great, you know. Sure, right. And I had insurance at the time, too, you know. Yeah. Uh, that was many years before I was saved, but another issue. But the point is, I've been close to death a couple times. Death can be very painful, all right. Even if you are a truly saved Christian and whatever else, you can get older and you can die. You can, you know, there's some rough ways to die. And I've had some pretty bad accidents too. And death has been very close to me a couple times. But can you imagine not having to die? All of a sudden you hear your name and you go, what? And just like that, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, boom. Whoosh, up we go. Bye-bye world. You know, I remember I used to, uh, there was this one road I would drive frequently, 
And uh, there was an alcohol store on the corner there, and I had on the front of my truck at that point in time, I had fear God. This is when I was still in Pennsylvania. And I used to always pray. I'd be like, okay, Lord, if this, if you want to rapture us, now's the time. You know, <laughs> it's just like whew, up we go, and here comes this pickup truck, unmanned pickup truck, coming through the front of the alcohol store with fear God on the front. Thought that would have been appropriate, but the Lord had other plans. So, but you know, the rapture is going to be great. Then you have the judgment seat of Christ, where you will receive rewards for the things that you've done for the Lord down here. That's going to be great. Then you have the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's going to be wonderful. Then you have the millennial kingdom. Then you have eternity. You talk about great and precious promises. You care. You talk about the, the, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I mean, wow. <laughs> really, really good stuff. But... Uh, are you ever going to overcome it? Are you going to overcome these bad things as things get worse and worse and worse? I know it's frustrating, brethren. I know it's frustrating like crazy. You know, I mean, all the time I'm, I'm trying to say to people, you know, you know, people go, oh, you're a cult. You don't recommend anybody else. I try. <laughs> I really, really, really try to recommend other people. And it's just like they go off in some kind of a whoop, totally crazy direction. I'm going what am I supposed to do about this? You know, and I'm, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. I mean, I see the comments and stuff like that. A lot of times I'm, I just, you know, I'll glance at them. I mean, 900 and what, 30 something videos right now, I think. There's no way I can get, you know, answer every single comment or even look at all of them. I mean, there's thousands that are waiting approval and a couple thousand more possibly spam and I don't have time. It would be a full-time job, job just to look at comments. But I see some of it. I see some of you getting worn out, you know. And, you know, on that note, I just want to say, too, just remember Titus chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, talking about a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition. Reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. You start getting into these comment battles with people, I usually answer those people twice, and then, boom, they're done. If they don't have real sincere questions, I just go, okay, see you, goodbye. But here's the temptation. The temptation is where you just simply say, you know what, this guy attacks this guy and that guy says this and that guy, and I'm just getting confused and I'm just getting tired of this whole thing. You know what, I had a, I had a guy say, you know, I used to listen to you and I used to listen to a couple other guys and I'm just done. I'm just going to, I'm going to become an atheist now and I'm just finished because it's all just, you guys contradict each other and whatever else. You know what's happening there? He's not overcoming you know what he is? Fearful, unbelieving, has become abominable. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a murderer yet, yet, but uh, heading towards whoremongering, sorcering, you know, being a sorcery there, getting into sorcery, idolatry, liars. And you know, it's funny too because you go down through that list there fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars. That's why people reject Jesus Christ. Hmm. Very interesting, isn't it? Are you going to overcome? Are you going to be in verse 7? Or are you going to be represented by verse 8? And get to the point there where in verse 8, you're going to lose rewards. If you're a Christian, you're saved. You're not going to have to worry about going to hell when you die, going to the lake of fire in eternity. You won't have to worry about that, but you'll lose rewards. You'll, uh, you know, again, I want to just warn about something. And, you know, I can't do a whole big study on this. You know, I just wanted to do a pretty good study on the millennial kingdom. But there's a guy, Joey Faust, and he has this uh, teaching that half the body of Christ is going to go to in, be in the millennial kingdom ruling and reigning, those that are good and faithful. The other half will be in hell for the thousand years. That's stupid, okay? That's really stupid. I mean, again, just a simple, basic understanding of Scripture. Jesus is not going to split his body up and half of it down there and burning in hell, the other half on the earth. You say, well, but you should look at that and look at I'm not going to look into it. It's stupid, all right? 
I don't care what scriptures the guy twists. I understand the, the basic concepts of scripture. Just go, yeah, no. It's about as dumb as the post-trib thing where you say the, you know, the bride of Christ goes through God's wrath. It can't happen. And the wrath begins at the very beginning too. All right, again, I've covered that in other studies. Brethren, you know, again, I just want to say this, and that is that you know, I, I hope that people out there don't look to me as their final authority. That's why I always point to this King James Bible. There's no telling what could happen to me. No telling what could happen to my wife. You know, I mean, we're our, our plan right now, our prayer is we're going to stay in this thing as long as we can. Uh, it gets tough sometimes financially. Uh, I mean, if you think we're making a lot of money and you think that we're very wealthy, we are not. Uh, there are times where, where the, you know, the giving just goes way down and it just is really, really, really tough. And, uh, you know, we're dedicated. I mean, we just, we say, okay, well, we just can't get this or can't get that. Or, you know, we just, just focus on paying the bills and, and, um, we get through it. I don't have real, you know, brand new equipment or anything else. I mean, we're very, very basic, very simple. And, uh, you know, I'll be talking more about that in the future. Um, just explaining some things to people, just cause people have a right to know that stuff. But, uh, you know, it gets tough, brethren. I know you're going through some things. We're going through some things. I think that there's some real major spiritual attacks happening. And I've seen so many people that I used to count as friends, and they've just turned on me just like rabid dogs. <laughs> and what am I going to do about it? I'm going to overcome. By God's grace, by God's mercy, I'll overcome. And you say, well, you mean, shouldn't you be saying we as in you and your wife? Her life is between her and the Lord. Yeah, she's my wife. Yeah, I'm her spiritual overseer. Yeah, sure, that's there. But uh, when it comes right down to it, she's accountable to God. And you out there, you ladies out there, you're accountable to God. Even if you have a saved husband, you're still accountable to God for your actions. Are you going to overcome? Do you really want to part in that millennial kingdom? Do you want to rule and reign with Jesus Christ? The Bible says you have to suffer. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. Are you suffering right now? Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I really do pray that, Lord, that you would just uh, help us all to stay very close to your word. Uh, just help us all to stay very close in prayer. Um, not to let anything else enter in because there's so many distractions. There's so many satanic attacks right now upon the body of Christ. And I can just feel the evil building every day. Uh, it's just, it, it's strange, Lord, to feel it. And I know you see what's going on. You know everything that's going on. And I'm sure it's so very vexing to you to see what this people in this evil world are doing right now. And uh, I just really do pray, Lord, that you would help your, your saints, your children, uh, to draw closer to you so that they will overcome, that they would not look at men and brothers and sisters in Christ out there as their example or their standard, but that they would only look to your word and that they would realize that to be an overcomer, they're going to have to stay close to you. And uh, if everybody else turns against you, Lord, they're going to have to stand by themselves. And I pray that for all my viewers. I pray that for myself and for my wife and uh, all those that I know that are saved. I pray that you, you would help us to become overcomers, Lord, and, and that uh, we would get through this thing and be found faithful when you catch us away. And I just uh, pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, that's going to be it. Um, I really want to do the second half of the study outside, but it just didn't work out that way. Um, you know, there's a lot of things like that in life. You, you kind of have things planned and it doesn't work out. But um, we are going to do our very best to continue coming out with studies and sermons and things. Uh, as I say many, many times, uh, we really, more than anything else, we need your prayers. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many times it's been just a very, very, very rough day. And all of a sudden it just feels, you can just feel things change. And, you know, when we have a good day, uh, again, I don't want you to, you know, I want you to understand this out there, one of, 
for our viewers, when we have good days, we're not spending it, um, you know, going to the mall and socializing or going out to eat or watching movies or things like that. Our good days consist of more research done. Um, I'm, we do a lot of reading, a lot of research. Uh, there, are, there are times when it goes for days, probably four or five, six days sometimes where we don't even leave the ministry headquarters here. It's just, you know, research, research, research. Getting back to people, answering people. Um, we do our best at it. Uh, it's, I mean, there's only two of us. Uh, our son's, you know, obviously not doing much to help us right now. <laughs> he's our, he's our little uh, um, happy, you know, time or whatever. <laughs> you know, he brings great joy into our lives. But uh, it just, please, please pray for us. Don't, don't just say, oh yeah, brother, I'm praying for you, you know, and just, you know, oh that's right, I forgot to pray for him. No, no, no. We need people praying on a daily basis all right dedicate time to praying for us when you go to bed when you get up in the morning when at meals and things like that just pray and just say lord please protect brother brian and sister Catherine. Just please protect them uh, just put your holy angels around about them and, and just help them to continue coming out with new videos and and things like that um, i mean again our equipment here is very very old and things and and uh but the Lord just keeps it going. I mean, it's it's miraculous to see these things happen. And, uh, you know, just wanted to say that. Uh, I'm going to quit, I guess. i got a, a whole lot of other videos. We just found some really interesting information today. Uh, I've found them, some things. And, and while I was away, uh, out trying to film the video out in the snow areas out there, uh, while I was away, my wife was finding out some things, and she's anxious to tell me over here and, and everything. So uh, we just, I mean, we live. The ministry is our life. You know, again, I, I hope people understand that. This isn't some little YouTube uh, turn on the webcam kind of a thing. YouTube is the best option right now. Uh, my, my website, it has a video player, an internal video player, but it just, I tried uploading videos on it years ago. It's terrible. It just does not play the videos correctly. People were telling me, yeah, I can't even watch the video. YouTube is, is, a, is a reliable video source right now. We're on Vimeo um, as well, and I'm thankful to the brother for that. But, uh, you know, it just, we just, this ministry is us, is everything. It's our lifeblood. This isn't just some kind of a flippant little thing that we just, you know, while we're not on camera, we're just living as secular people. Uh, that's not it at all. I mean, you know, we just have, uh, I'm not going to bother showing around here, but it just, you know, stacks and stacks and stacks of printed things and things that we're researching and reading this book and reading that and looking into this and looking into that. We give, you know, uh, my wife's a little bit better at sticking to one project, whereas I'm like usually on five or six at a time, you know. So, uh just wanted to say that because I think a lot of people just kind of forget that this is actually a ministry here. I know there's a lot of people on YouTube that have taken it upon themselves to do little videos and stuff. And, you know, okay, fine, that's great. But we're not just, you know, I'm not coming home from my 9 to 5 job and sitting down plunking myself in front of a web camera and running my mouth for a half hour. You know, that's not how this thing works. I mean, we have these notes take time. You know, these, these sermons take many, many hours, sometimes days, to research and make sure and I check and recheck and check and recheck and make sure my scriptures are correct and I go through and, okay, and is there anything else? And I pray before I do this stuff. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into this stuff. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize that because I see this thing, you're not a preacher, you're a punk, you're this, you're that. And I'm going, you know, okay, people can say what they want about me. That's fine. But I don't think people, some people, I don't think really understand what exactly does go on here. You know, King James Video Ministries is not a YouTube only kind of a thing. I mean, we are a separate ministry from YouTube. And, you know, if YouTube ever shuts us down, well, we're going to continue someplace, somewhere. You know, that's, I mean, there's nothing else that, that I want to do in life. Uh, if I have to go back to the secular workplace, okay, I'll do that. I have... You know, there again, most of my life has been secular work. It has not been ministry. 
and I have you know different things that I can do and okay but unfortunately the number of you know preachers that are standing by the word is getting less and less as time goes by and that's I don't see that as a joyous thing and hey I'm I'm out ahead of everybody no 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 I don't believe that way first of all and secondly it's a grief to me when I see other guys that are using the King James Bible and they're falling away and they're getting mixed up and they're getting into the wrong crowds and I'm going uh you know and it takes a lot before I'll speak against the ministry. Again, people don't see that. They don't. They think I just, I'm out there just trying to rip everybody down and cut everybody down. That isn't it. That isn't it at all. So you know, I just see a lot of things. I just take for granted that people understand. And you know, I need to start telling a little bit more of this stuff, a little bit more of the background information, because I think that, again, I think a lot of people just kind of think we we have an easy way through life and. Things are just easy, you know, and that's not the case. You know, I want you to be able to relate to us. Uh, we do go through a lot of troubles and a lot of trials and heartaches and things too. Uh, we have we have issues with family members. We have money issues. We have health issues. We have uh, there's things there. You know, um, we're not up on a plateau above everybody else preaching down to people. Um, not at all. So, uh, like I, like I said, I just you know. I've always tried to be honest in the ministry, but you know, I, I think I've just been kind of trying to really focus on getting videos out and videos out and videos out. And I see a lot of people kind of have questions and are going, you know, wondering about things. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about what goes on here, uh, what this whole ministry is about. I'm going to talk more about that in the future. So that's going to be it uh, for now. Uh, we have some really good stuff coming out. Uh, like I said, it's it's some stuff that uh, the devil's not going to be happy about, which, you know, is pretty much what we really enjoy. So <laughs> uh, please keep us in your prayers. Uh, that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.